Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Brett Park and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about perfectionism, how I try to be the perfect student, how it all crumbles apart, and how I try to balance everything from good grades to my own personal practice as an artist, social media, applying to jobs, and literally trying to do everything and how that's literally not possible. As a result, as you can probably tell, I am so sick. I got the stomach flu literally last week. I have an awful cold this week and I'm still trying to film this video because I know I haven't posted in a while. So we're going to talk about everything. And the first thing we're going to talk about is why I think I need to be a perfectionist in the first place. And it all starts from a young age when I was a little little lad. A lot of it has to do with my cultural background. I grew up in a Korean American household, although we were very whitewashed possibly a lot of the work ethic that was instilled in me came from that korean traditional side me needing to save face for my family so in many ways i associate the accolades and the achievements i was doing for serving my family and not really myself because i just wanted to make them proud so already from the jump y'all from the jump from the womb i was trying to please this external force and from that i only gained actual self-worth from external validation, from that body saying, oh, you did okay in this, keep doing it. From there, I just started chasing what I was kind of naturally good at, which was not math. My parents were like, okay, we get it. The Lord knows you cannot do math to save your life. We're not gonna put you in like, come on, we're not gonna waste money on that extra stuff. We're gonna put you into these other things so you can express your other talents, like for example, soccer. We're competing nationally at some point, internationally. That era of my life is now over. That competitive sports side also instilled in me very like hardworking abilities, especially with it being a team sport. You work hard for your team. You're not doing this for yourself, you're doing it for other people, which in many ways can be good in moderation. Of course, you don't want to do things only for yourself because that's very selfish, um, but when you're doing everything for everyone else, you don't start to build your self-concept and your self-identity. You end up building and molding and shifting to the people around you, which is not beneficial for your men's health and whatnot. And so because of that, I worked extraordinarily hard trying to please other people, trying to get good grades, while also trying to be super athletic and do well in that area. And I was also in like clubs and leadership at school. And so even my extracurriculars when I was doing student government I just like went for the president and so by now we established wanted to please my parents wanted to please the soccer coaches whatever and I work hard for other people but adding on another layer to that my identity growing up was very different from what I was taught I should be or what the ideals were in my family and I don't want to go into details about that however there was a gap. And because there was a gap, I knew that I had to do everything in my power to be absolutely exceptional to fill that gap with accolades and achievements in hopes that somehow those things could be able to compensate for what my identity lacked. And also the last factor, I grew up very privileged, okay? I grew up in the Bay Area, and there's a lot of things about the Bay Area, specifically Cupertino, Sunnyvale, Saratoga, that high schools there are batshit crazy, okay? People lie, people cheat, people pay their way into colleges, and so if you don't get into like an Ivy League, People are like, what the fuck happened to you? There's always the pressure to get into a top 20 school. I did not get into a top 20 school, okay? USC is not top 20 school. So, feel about that. Don't have any regrets though. Literally no regrets. Now, all my friends got recruited for colleges and they went to IVs and whatnot. I did not do the recruiting process for many reasons. I probably just wasn't good enough for D1. Ivy League is like D1, but like people say it's fake D1. I was not good enough to get into them. I will not like hype myself up as I was like, oh, I was a, I was this good ass soccer player. Da, 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 da. No, D1 was like barely obtainable, like with connections. You know what I mean? My coach is very upfront. He's like, you're in the bubble for D1. Other people, they are D1. I get it. I get it. So I didn't do the whole soccer thing, and I'm not doing this thing that was such a big part of my life growing up. And so I came here with a plan. I said, I'm going to study my butt off and get a 4.0 and I'm going to join all the clubs. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. And I'm going to be a double major in business. I study communications, by the way. So like a 4.0 for me was like obtainable. If I was pre-med girl, I'd be like, oh, let me try to get like a 3.3. You know what I mean? Like it's very different. So the second part is what I'm doing now in college. And if I'm balancing everything, okay? Newsflash, I'm not. Turns out. I fucking hate business. I like was looking up courses online and I was like, would I really like this? 
No, I wouldn't like it. So my first semester at USC during the pandemic, I grinded my ass off to draw every single day to get into art school because if I wasn't doing soccer, I had to fill my time in with something else besides school that was another craft that I could build on and become good at. So I did the portfolio, got in, it was a fun time, but then I was like, wait, you know, I'm not doing much else. Like, I need to be filling my time with an internship. So I did an internship my entire freshman year. I did this nonprofit, like, social media random thing. Then I worked at a startup remotely that was in New York. Why? And that was on top of school, and that was on top of me trying to build a portfolio for art, and I was also documenting the entire experience online and posting content about that. Turns out, babes, my social life was okay. It wasn't like the USC videos I see online. Videos of people partying at USC, we're going to frats, we're going to football games. Had not gone to a single football game, except for the very first one after the pandemic, and I went for a quarter, saw a girl fight, and then left the stadium. Dead ass, okay? Sure, you go to some house parties, they're okay, but I never like cared for them too much. I mainly just like to hang out with people like one-on-one. -on -one. That is what I love to do. I love to coffee chat, get to know people. But that was the extent of my social life. And so sophomore year, I'm grinding my ass off, not sleeping much at all, okay? And I'm a communications major. Like, babes, what am I working hard for? What am I working hard for? And so I'm chasing all these things. And so the next step, your sophomore year, was like, okay, I need to get an internship, I need more scholarships, I need more da 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 So I apply for scholarships. Literally get hate crimed in the interview. Had an art piece with a slur in it, and I was describing it to them and how it was so important to my personal story, why I'm in the educational space I'm in, why I want to pursue XYZ in the future, and how it relates to this art piece with a title that had a slur in it. They then proceed to make fun of the slur and make fun of me and how I relate to it. To a certain extent, I couldn't tell if some of them were laughing at me or some of them were laughing just simply at the word that was in the title. Whatever. I, I literally thought something was wrong with me i was like why with everything i'm doing i'm putting my ass out there i'm working day and night i'm sacrificing sleep i could be doing more with my social life i was like i'm literally trying to be perfect so that sends me into a loop and, and also it's not like a woe is me situation i'm gonna very much lay out like from the onset i'm extraordinarily extraordinarily privileged to be in the position I am to study at a university, to be able to pursue such opportunities, to be able to grow up in such a privileged area and have the education that I received in high school to be able to give me, literally give me these opportunities. It is beyond. And so I already understand the irony of attaching my self-worth to certain accolades when I'm already so privileged to even be in the position I am, to want more, like, isn't that selfish? And it is selfish to an extent. Yet again, through my eyes, I, I'm gonna say it so many times, to compensate for every single ideal and expectation they had of me, which I could, cannot give to them. I can't. And so, all of these things I felt like I had to get because I needed to show them that I was worth something and they could even tell me now today like oh we're proud of you oh we love you but in my brain i still just like i won't trust it like i know that there's so many other things culturally things that go beyond just words where i know i am not of worth to my entire family junior year i again try to apply to five different scholarships and I start applying to, inter to, to internships, and I apply to, I kid you not, over 100 internships for a summer. It seems crazy, but a lot of them you just have to put in like a resume and a cover letter, and then you're good. So I had the resumes done, I made three different resumes for three different types of jobs. One resume geared towards marketing, project management, which I am not even in the tech space so I don't even know why I'd try. And another resume for our related practices. Shoot that out there, okay? Denied, denied, denied. And half the time y'all, you don't even hear back from these internship people. You just don't even know, and so actually getting a rejection email is a blessing. Cause you actually know you were officially rejected. But because of that, I was like, oh fuck, I need to get my shit together and do other things better. Because obviously, obviously this internship stuff isn't working out. So again, I'm going into the studio, trying to go every single night, trying to not party as much, trying to 
literally get my shit together to still get good grades, grind for my art, and my clubs on campus. So that's where my headspace is at. So for present day, okay, as I reflect upon this entire thing, what am I thinking about? Where did all this grinding, this effort take me? Is it paying off? Even in paper, if I have good grades, the clubs on campuses, the three internships I had before, content, creation, whichever you want to call this, interaction. Um, even if I try to be good at all of those things, it's not good enough apparently for what, for what, for what? An internship. It becomes a gap, right? Like it's a cognitive dissonant gap. You think that, oh, if you work hard and you are doing well on paper, you will get this. And when that doesn't happen, you have a little breakdown, okay? You spiral a bit. You kind of cry. You start thinking about things that aren't like the best, per se. And for the past like month, I was been getting sick on and off constantly. And I didn't know why until I really was like sat down with my friends and they were like, dude, like you don't sleep, you don't eat well, and you think that's gonna help you? Like you think that's like gonna make you healthy? Like no. And I was like, well shit, like honestly you're kind of right, like I, I'm actually not feeling well. And look at me now y'all, I'm sick as hell, I'm filming a video, and I'm in my bed with Ricola cough drops wrappers right next to me. Literally just in my bed. Literally just in my bed. And I don't know if it's worth it. I guess we'll find out later. It's impossible to do it all. Most likely, what you really want aren't accolades. It's not the grades. It's not internships. Okay, because Lord knows I ain't getting those. It's about a feeling. Feeling like you're good enough. Feeling like you belong. Feeling happy to an extent. And feeling like you have a community. Those other things we are really truly chasing and even I still think because I'm still gonna you know do my thing after this video I'm still in the mentality of oh actually I will feel those things if I get this if this happens but then sometimes I the thing happens for me and I'm like well I feel the same so obviously I wasn't shooting high enough I should actually get this thing and then I'll feel that way I just hope that you know talking about kind of my journey with perfectionism, dealing with it, and understanding validation, and kind of psychoanalyzing myself going through my journey will be um, helpful for some of y'all in the same position, and so you don't end up like me, a mess, a mess, babes. I'm gonna go rest now, I'm actually, no, I'm gonna edit this video now, and I'm gonna go to bed. So if y'all like this video, I like the video. If you have a fun comment, critique, or joke to share, comment down below. And if you like me, my art, and want to follow my journey as an artist in LA, you can subscribe. That was rough. You can subscribe. It's a fun time here. And I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's the end of the video.